What's up, guys? Um, d -Bull here. Um, just doing a little update from uh, since the past notes just dropped today for Wilson. Um, I recently just did a pet build. Uh, it's evolving around a lot of the archers and, uh, you know, duplicating them up to three times. Uh, all piercing, all poison, all high damage. Been working out pretty good. Um, I was using two of the, uh, the, the mortises or whatever. Um, but I condensed that down just to one because I just wanted to, you know, basically get a total of nine uh, skeletons on the map. And uh, one of the big things with the patch today is uh, they actually improved the pet summon AI actually uh, pretty well. Uh, there are some, some complaints that I do have. There's some things that they still can do better on, but for the most part, uh, it is a welcome patch change to uh, make summoning play style a lot better. So I got my uh, patch notes pulled up on my second monitor here. I got the gameplay of all the new, uh, well, basically how the pets are responding and how the AI is, so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, I'm level 72, uh, pushing 91 uh, in the side of the rift system that they have inside the game. And we're just going to go directly uh, straight to the summons. And here we go. So, uh, just in general for the active skills, uh, we're not going to go too much into anything outside the summoning skills because in most of these games I just focus on summons mostly. Um, I like to have minions do my bidding, sit back, and maybe do some other spells and stuff like that to, you know, do some extra damage and what have you not, and uh, basically have them do all the damage. Um, I still feel, as crazy as this is about to sound, I still feel that pets need to do a lot more damage. Um, if you want players to make like a pure summoner build and they're not really having too much to uh, to rely upon their autos or uh, casting certain spells to do a lot of damage because my uh, Ember's ability uh, is still very powerful. Um, you know, it still splits in two, it pierces through everything, it hits them with the elemental of fire, and then it burns them with the burning element. And uh, that is a still very strong skill. Uh, not saying that it shouldn't be, but uh, then again, like I said, I did develop the build to be uh, in between both uh, using, uh, you know, a castable ability and my uh, summons. So anyway, man, let's just go ahead and get down to it. Damage curve for summons. Uh, they have here that the damage of the summons are greatly increased in the first 15 levels up to 100%. Uh, that's pretty cool because when I first got summons, they really weren't doing shit but just dying and I kept recasting them. They're okay, but they weren't that great. So that will definitely help them out early in the leveling. Uh, of course, you know, you're not level 15 for that long, man. If you played this game pretty serious, like in one day, you could easily get to the in-game content. So I'm pretty shocked that uh, they're worried about the damage of the pets early on. The main thing about the pets early on is they die a lot. Uh, one thing I think they should have looked into is basically uh, keeping them, you know, sur more survivable in the early levels because it really feels really bad. Uh, when you're using your willpower to keep resummoning monsters and you're not getting that damage that you need and uh, it, I mean, it just felt pretty awful but I get at least now with the damage uh, increase of 100% at least if you're sacrificing willpower to resummon your pets they're actually going to be doing some pretty solid damage um, the increase so much damage during the first 40 levels about 20% seems about right I still think it could be a little bit higher because there are going to be some people out there who just want to make pure you know summoner builds and that's fine and uh, they really don't have like a lot of utility in certain things to really help amplify your pets. But then again, they do have a couple spells that kind of stack everything up, do damage in that way, but they still scale off of scale damage. Uh, there's nothing that makes it so like a monster takes a certain X amount of more damage, like how it used to be back in the days of Diablo 3 with like uh, piranhas, like for the Witch Doctor. Uh, they had a lot of different tools and options that they could do to amplify uh, the damage that was taken by, or to uh, make it so that the uh, enemy was more vulnerable to more damage increases, which would help our pets out. Um, so, you know, first 40 levels increase damage by 20%, so that's pretty cool. Uh, summons damage from level 40 to 90 are also increased from 20% to 200%. So, uh, I noticed a substantial amount of damage increase. Um, however, I know this is going to sound a little bit crazy. They really need to look into increasing the damage a little bit more. Uh, unless they uh, have fixed some scaling or made it so that the uh, summons scale harder off your gear or something like that or certain stats that apply to them. Um, I know that seems kind of crazy, but like I said, I'm just putting that out there. Uh, with the zombie explosion, though, uh, that you could do, it probably is doing a ridiculous amount of damage now because that was already hitting for 10k, so it's probably hitting for a lot more. So exploding zombies might be the main forefront for pet damage or it might be Parasite because they did substantially buff that skill as well too. 
Um, health curve for summons. Now, this was a little bit shocking to me. It said increase the health pool of summons from level 1 to 55 from 500% to 0%. Uh, I don't know if that's an error because the pets were dying horribly when I first started off early in the game. So I, hopefully it's from 0 to 500% and that's a typo. And th this here gets like a little bit weird too. Reduce the health pool of summons from level 55 to 90 from 0% to minus 75%. So that's also very weird because uh, maybe they felt like the scaling for the pets was just too much health. Um, I actually would have to actually look into it, man. Um, early on, pets were frustrating, so I took the early towns to make it so the pets survive a lot longer. Um, later on in the game, when you level them up to high level, you know, you get them, uh, their, their, their skills, you know, start, you know, ramping up and leveling up. You may not actually need to even take the additional skills inside of Plaguebringer in order to give your pets more survivability. That's something nuts. Because if you were able to do that, then that would offer you up or open up a lot of potential to get a couple points into the skill tree of other different nodes and stuff that uh, that could be more beneficial to your to your build. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised is that if you know once you get to the end game, the pets are just so damn tanky. Uh, you know what? You don't even need to take in any inside of your passive skill tree. You don't need to take any skills that basically give them more survivability. So that could explain why they reduced it from 0% to negative 75%. That's the only rational explanation I can get. Uh, once my, you know, my, my pets got to like around like level 60, they, they really stopped dying. Uh, so maybe that could have been a, a certain effect of them actually, uh, you, know, you know, having certain uh, precautions in the late game to make sure your pets never died. But if they're reducing it to 75%, stands to believe, it, 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 it's, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, uh, you know, I, let me put it to you this. Let me just put it to you this way. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? If they have to reduce it from zero percent to negative seventy-five percent, maybe the developers knew so much and they started looking at the writing on the wall and they're just like, you know, this is way too much damn HP for these minions. Uh, there are two survivability and there's no threat of them dying. Um, but that's going to be interesting though. So after the changes and the reduction to you know these additional HP, you know, in my opinion, early on in the game, pets get absolutely destroyed. If, uh, you know, if you get pets to a certain level and they don't even need anything that reduces their damage, it's that's definitely going to free up a lot of skill points uh, that can go other places. So we'll have to kind of wait and see on that. I haven't really tested it yet, but, you know, I want to at least push to like level 80 to 90 before I kind of start making my conclusions about that. Um, summon is AI. Summon should not move faster and stay ahead of summon when traveling. They're not necessarily always staying ahead of you. But I have noticed a substantial improvement, uh, especially with the little Archer homeboys following me around and doing what they got to do. They've been stacking up quite neatly. They're a lot quicker to get towards me. When I zoom ahead, they end up coming and they, uh, coming up behind me. And they, uh, you know, as you see them on the screen right now, they're just doing a fantastic job. Like uh, they are actually staying up with me. Um, now, unfortunately for Liberal Mortis, the little Golem guy, he's still the king of tanking. Like in terms of tankiness and and being able just to take so much punishment and whole threat, it's he's fantastic. Uh, but I do find him still bugging out sometimes. I don't know if he's having like you know flashbacks to when like you know a couple days ago when he was absolutely horrendous in terms of following you. But the AI for that has you know improved dramatically, so I can't complain too much. I hope they keep working on the um, the AI. That's always a constant struggle. Um, they could do certain things, like maybe make certain certain uh, types of uh, gear drop that makes it so that the you know your pets become more aggressive. That's one way you could do it, um, or just basically fixing the AI straight up. Uh, one thing they could do instead of having to worry so much about the AI is actually providing a skill for the summoner that allows us to. Uh, Summon all our bars well, basically to transport all of our summons in battle or in play to wherever the summoner is standing um, They have that in uh, PoE I forgot what the skill I think it's called clairvoyance or I could be wrong I, I forget but there's a certain specific skill that recalls all your pets to you and they puts like a little HP regen on them as well um, and there was some really cool setups you can actually do with that. I'm not saying that they have to go full blown uh, like that. What they actually could do is just make a simple skill and makes it so that all pets are recalled to the location of where you're at. Uh, and then maybe they could do something like uh, it drops a little health circle or something like that or, you know, whatever they want to want to do.
But if they were able to make it so that I can add a tap of a skill, and it can eat half my willpower, I'd be okay with that, you know, in terms of expenses for cost. If it was just able for them to bring all my summons to where I'm at, it would improve the, the quickness and, and, and the, clean, the cleanliness of the, any type of summoner build. Because like I said um, before, um, when you're farming all these levels and these rips, you need some type of mobility and an escape option, which is trans, you know, which which we do have. Um, but the another major factor of it is as well too is that even though our movement is good and we have a dodge ability and we have a dodge roll and we can move the uh, through the environment pretty seamlessly and, 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 and cleanly, our pets are still always going to be dragging behind. One thing they could do is make it so that the pets booster, you know, when the pets are so much of a distance away from the summoner that it boosts the uh, how fast they follow. But that might cause more problems. Whereas, you know what? I think if they actually put in the skill just to, you know, summon all your pets to you, I think that would be fair. And uh, make it actually, I don't think it should be like a free skill. I don't think it should be something built in. I think that's a little bit too powerful. I think at the sacrifice of using you know, one of your six skills that you're allotted, if you want to designate one of them to summon all your minions to you, I think that would be pretty cool, pretty fair. Um, yeah, that would legitimately help a lot of these situations. Because then, you know, when I'm running through the environment, I can just add a tap of a button, summon all my monsters on top of where I am. Or, you know what, put it inside of a gear or a unique item, but see, I worry if they put it in a unique item, then that might be the end all be all unique item that everybody needs to get uh, in order to get what they need or get the uh, ability to you know uh, you know uh, stabilize your DPS by being able to summon where your, all your minions in the field of play wherever you're at uh, instead of them you know walking up on screen and wandering up behind you um, so just food for thought if it a developer or if anybody ever sees this out there um, summons now engage targets from further I kind of always felt they were engaging for further, so kudos to them on that. They did a good job. Melee summons attack shape has been improved. They now hit a large area of skills. Didn't know that. That's fantastic. So Liver Mortis and the other skills, other guys that do more, uh, you know, do, do the melee hits, uh, they will have a large range. For me, I didn't want to deal with that still. I'd rather just go with the range, you know, uh, Scar Archers. They got a good range, and the less I have to babysit them, the more DPS I turn out, and the more I can traverse through the terrain and get through the dungeon so I can get to the next floor. Um, now, for this specifically, skills, Livermortis, the Immortal Maul's base health multiplier is reduced by 30%. Uh, absolutely, I get that. I mean, the Livermortis, the basic skeleton, uh, the zombie golem, uh, he's powerful in terms of taunting and taking tons of punishment. And I can definitely see how that can be a problem. Because if you spec points into, into his threat, and then, uh, you know, you get him with the extra HP boost at higher levels when the monsters should be, like, you know, rolling you over or steamrolling you if you get hit, you just let the golem take aggro, you aggro with a couple aggro with him or taunt a couple times, and there's really not much the monsters can do. And they'll just stay on that golem, and, uh, you know, he just won't die. So the 30% reduction, I get that. Feeding Swarm, the base health multiplier for the summon has increased by 50%. Uh, I think that's really good because the HP was really low for a lot of these zombies, uh, the, whether it be the soldier or the skeletons and stuff like that, without like, having to spec in a certain talent to get the HP up. Uh, hunting swarm, so that's for both ones for feeding swarm, ones for hunting swarm, so that's all the zombies. Uh, feeding swarm gets 50% increase, hunting swarm gets 100% because uh, those guys' HP pools were atrocious before. Parasite uh, got a substantial amount of buffs, increased the base bonus damage to possess monsters by 100% to 300%. That's really cool. Parasite possessed monsters now have a bonus of 50% attack and cast speed. Fantastic. Possessed monsters now have a bonus uh, of 100% movement speed. Fantastic. On shoulders of giants, modern fair now increases minions health by 40% and the minions damage by 33. I don't know what the uh, Pacific I don't I haven't run into that affix yet I don't know if you'll be able to get it on all your gear uh, oh I'm sorry uh, I do a ball apologize it said uh, on shoulders of giants modifier I think that's the modifier just for that specific skill uh, it increases the minions health by 40% and the minions damage by 30% so uh, that is a good one for parasite to help improve the damage and then um, fix the bug where a possessed monster didn't have the base bonus applied to parasite so um, I like parasite 
But I was getting frustrated because a lot of the time, the monster... You I mean, you sit there and you drain the monster to kill it with parasites so then you can possess it. And then it dies. That was pretty frustrating. So with these changes, I think that's going to help a lot more people incorporate parasite. And maybe you might even see somebody running a, you know, multiple duplicate uh, setup with parasite. Uh, the one thing I will say is this. Uh, parasite is basically like specters from PoE. They need to look into ability to save your, your your parasites of the monsters you possess. Unless they want that as a mechanic, um, you know, if you always, you know, just, I guess, parasiting whatever monsters you can. If you're going to have to just always just select parasites on the fly, like as soon as you log out, that's it, you lose your parasites, then they need to significantly buff the damage. Um, now, if they make it in a way... Where, you know, maybe you just go in story lore real quick and you go to a certain area and you possess a couple of monsters and, and for Parasite and they scale them up to your level. And when you leave the game and you start doing all your bounties or re-entering the game or whatever, you keep the same Parasites. I think that would be fantastic. Um, you know, you don't want to have, you don't want to lose those monsters. You don't want to get frustrated like that. But that is definitely big food for thought for the developers out there. Um, Parasite should absolutely just store the minions that you possess. And if they say, you know what, we don't want to go that direction, hey, that's cool. But just make it so that when I possess a couple of monsters, buff their damage ridiculously so I don't have to worry about, oh, man, I lost a good Parasite target. You know, now I got to go look for another one. You know, um, you know, at least if that is the case, I can be like, okay, well, I can grab, I can Parasite possess this monster, this monster, this monster, do some okay damage, and I'm fine. It's not as good as if I got Pacific Units. But, uh, you know, like I said, man, they, they're going to have to really look into that skill if they really want it to be uh, a solid one. But as for now, I'm still just rocking the archers. As you guys saw, I unlocked the last level of duplicate so I can duplicate a spell two times, allowing me to have the same copy of the spell three times. So I'm running three sets of archers, all with poison, all with damage increase, all with piercing. So that's nine uh, skeletons, one liver mortis for the tank, of course, on certain bosses. Uh, and then, of course, I got my little teleport skill, and I also got the uh, the embers uh, just for the extra additional damage. Um, overall, um, I like the way the build came out. Uh, you know, having three setups for the archers, having the liver mortis for the tank, and uh, the, the consuming embers, and my little teleport for you know just getting around the environment quickly or just getting out of getting out of trouble really quick. Um, it's pretty smooth. Uh, I think it's going to be no problem climbing all the way to the end game because, you know, I'm already pushing content that's way higher than my level uh, because the archers just do such a good job. And now with the improvements to the AI and then making them a lot tougher, it shouldn't be a lot of problem. One thing they still have to fix is, though, is that they definitely need to make it so that when you die, your pets stop attacking. Because I can definitely see people using that in the end game and abusing it, getting to a certain boss is ridiculous. Everybody dies and you sit there with your minions with all these buff stats and new improved AI and they just basically sell the boss while everybody is, you know, dead and then you just resurrect yourself after that. So hopefully they uh, will patch that out. But uh, outside of that, man, um, solid patch notes. Um, I think those are the kind of things they need to really keep doing. I think they need to keep focusing on polishing the game and making sure the game crashes less. I did have three to four crashes today that were pretty annoying. I don't know if that's because of the new patch or what's going on, but they just got to keep focusing on that. And then once they start working on that and getting the balance and they developing a better... I think they need to put a little bit more effort into the in-game system so there's a little bit more stuff to do. than it, Or not so much stuff to do, but so it's less monotonous. You know, the same thing over and over again. So that's something else to look for or look into. <laughs> Um, if they were able to do that and, uh, you know, you know, get the base game polished well enough and balanced and they can definitely start looking into like, you know, multiple player, ha multiple player having seasons or ladders or I don't know if that's their, 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 what their goal is, but I would highly hope they would because that offers a lot of replayability for people to keep coming back and, and playing. Um, I heard they're going to be looking into buffing uniques to make them, um, pretty good comparable to legendaries because right now legendary items are just king uh but i do think everybody should be wearing you know legendary items with a couple of them of the uniques maybe one or two uniques per, per per character to you know make your build work or do more damage or whatever have you uh not so outside of that man i appreciate you guys watching the video hope you guys enjoyed it uh you know hopefully wilson just keeps updating <laughs> keeps polishing and if they keep doing that listen to the community and then just keep planning things out i think the game uh can be can really shape up to be something uh like i said uh, i'm gonna push this guy 
as pretty high as I can go and then I'm going to start experimenting with other summons. So uh, expect a couple more videos out there the next week. Um, you know, I'm going to be testing a lot of pretty much all the summons. And then once I figure out the summons and get everything the way I want to, then I'll try different combinations of things of what else can be done with the summons. Uh, you know, I'm going to definitely try the zombie explode build. I'm going to try a build where I use nothing but summons and definitely try a build that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, might be more of a hybrid like spell slash, you know, summons type build. But anyways, man, that's enough yapping for me. I hope you guys have a nice night. Hope you guys enjoy playing Wilson. Um, if you guys are wondering uh, from Ragnarok and wondering why I'm not playing Ragnarok, well, they had to move the servers and it took about three days. So I've been playing a lot of Wilson and uh, getting into this and, you know, finally uploading some video content for this stuff. But uh, outside of that, man, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of crazy stuff. If you guys have any questions, the typical YouTube garbage. If you guys want to check me out live, I'm on twitch.tv slash SPSDevo. And uh, outside of all that, man, um, hope you guys are enjoying Wilson. Um, hopefully they keep patching it and uh, you know as I keep patching and updating stuff I'll keep uh, reporting on it if it does affect the summoner type style play style a lot so anyways man I'm Debo and I'm out